You could still got us Who won't change Nigeria but us Let's make you walk again Everybody rise again Tired for the tough talk Nobody won't do the walk Nobody won't die there I speak with no fear Change out for them You can't buy my soul No shishi for your votes This not the new oats How much is your votes Really really what? How much they want to give you for the pain If we choose wrong Then wait till we gain My brother wait till we gain My brother don't go sell your future To some you know, criminals We don't get the conscience Don't be say we go just day the fun vex and still allow nonsense for another four years. Cause my people still day jobless. Every day my people rent. So make we shine our eye. Cause no be only two bad choices where they the contest. Give me one more verse, yeah. please. I'm talking to you precisely. You day school office or the do NYC with your PVC. You can vote wisely. Even when the offer they bring in is so spicy. No she she for bright. If you talk to say, and I talk to say, no she she for bright. Oh. Make you play our part and we build this land. No she she for bright. You say, no she she for bright. You say, no she she for bright. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Nigeria go better. No she she for bright. If I do my part, then you do your part too. No she she for bright. Oh. You talk and you talk, we all just talk. No she she for bride, you say. No she she for bride, you say. No she she for bride. Go say your vote. Go say your vote. Good morning, dears. You're welcome to Enel River State Dialogue, the platform where we weekly sensitize, enlighten, and reorientate the purpose of government policies, programs, and activities. In doing that, we consciously get the feedback so that government can properly and suitably fine-tune our policies program to suit the public for which the policies are made for. But buying and selling is a direct reflection of the Nigerian society. It has been there with us as old as our political history has come. It has come with us. It is only changing, you know, modus. Before now, we used to know that in the NBN and the PRP days, GMPP days, people go to vote and then they come back with some kilos of rice, some wrappers and all of that. It exchange, you know, is an, an inducement of voting. But with time, it has taken a dimension, a worrisome dimension. 
where because of the money, the volume of money involved, they now resort to using dollars. You know, you can literally have, you know, a million naira convert to dollar in your wallet, and they resort to using dollars. Now, the implication is this. It has been proven that in one of the most important aspects, lucrative aspects of being a politician is to become a delegate. Your guess is as mine. In the Anan less election, you know what that implication will be. You know what the impact will be. Everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry will want to become a delegate, and you know the implication. Let me leave that for you. Today, viewers, we will be discussing vote buying implication on our democracy. I have with me three eminently qualified gentlemen who are, you know, here issuing to do, to dissect and do justice to this topic. On my immediate left, I have Mr. Mark Mosulo. In my address, you to know he's not a new person. He is the head of department, voter situation and publicity department, INEC Rivers. He said, You're welcome to the Rivers there once again. Yes, good day, viewers, and I'm happy for you having me today. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just immediately after uh, Amiru Marcosilo, I have, you know, an amiable gentleman. He is no other person than Comrade Jennifer George any will my interest you to know that he is the chairman coalition for civil society organization River State. Sir, you're welcome to the River State Dialogue. Thank you so much for coming to be here. <laughs> and on my far left, I have another amiable gentleman. He is Ambassador Akwapie Arinze Robinson. It is of the Transition Monitoring Group. That's it. You're welcome to the Nerida State. Thank you very much, sir. Viewers, viewers, yeah, viewers, you are the king here. We are doing this thing because we know you're up there and that you're listening. And we are doing this thing to enlighten you, to sensitize you, to reorientate you, you know, to create awareness of the dangers of vote buying. And that's the reason why we are doing this. So if you don't participate and we don't see your comment. This thing is not complete now. Yes, yes, you can agree with me, it's not complete. So keep your comments coming. You know, keep the comment coming. Just whichever way, participate, say something about it. Make sure that the awareness is being uh, created. created. That is the whole essence of this whole thing. And then, if you know that we have created another opportunity, you know, where you can. There are some persons who have that, uh, not necessarily, they are not the typing and the writing type, but they can verbally communicate very well. A, you know, a platform has been open for you, the phone lines, in due course, the phone lines to be open for you is another alternative source through which you can reach us so that, you know, this conversation can be run through us and take it to another level. My name is Adie Senmo. I am your anchor person for Enrique River State Dialogue today. We want to start on this note. I will start with uh, Mr. Osulo. Uh, I think that uh, we will take a bite. We will take a bite from in this question. You know, would it be right to say that vote buying is a reflection, you know, of the corrupt Nigerian society? Please, I want you to give an overview. You know, Corruption is one thing that has eaten deep into our fabric. In fact, it is you, you, you cannot discuss Nigeria without, you know, overtly or overtly, knowingly or knowingly mentioning corruption. So I want you to give an overview. Is it is it vote by the reflection of the Well um, vote by is just an exchange of your uh, mandate as a voter for a certain consideration to be furnished by the gladiators. It may be cash, it may be material substances, it may be other items given. And uh, it is not being done in the public where eyes can see or could find we emanate to having a bad leader who will not even observe the ground norm of the country, that's the constitution, 
as amended 1999, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, you may not even care about following what the Constitution stipulates about governance. This will go a long way to uh, for a, a candidate not being credible produced by such factor of vote buying to uh, malign section or chapter two of the Constitution, whereby um, the fundamental principles and state directives uh, policy of, of that chapter is not observed. That is where you provide welfare to the citizenry, ensure security to lives and property, provide education, provide health services and infrastructure. And it further goes a long way to impede on Chapter 4 of the Constitution of Fundamental Human Rights, whereby the, even uh, the rule of law is not being observed, court orders not obeyed. Uh, people are being infringed upon their dignity, right to dignity, right to life, right to freedom of association, right to speech is being trapped upon. That is the essence of producing a bad leader. And in essence, if you so change your vote for a material substance that is imminent, you will produce a bad leader that will not be visionary, will not carry people along, will not tell Nigeria what they are doing. You will be hearing cabals, cabals, cabals. So this is where the offense of vote buying is very bad. And furthermore, the Electoral Act did not explicitly state that he who buys will be punished by But Impliedly, it goes to talk about our PVC. If you sell your PVC or anybody found holding another person's PVC that is not his with the intention to vote with it, uh, the bad the person, the, the owner from voting is liable to an offense and punishable by two years imprisonment or 500,000 naira fine or both. So this is where I will stop for now. Um, um, I, Comrade, I want to, I want to say this. From all what he has said, does it mean that vote by is a product of Nigerian society? Uh, well, um, um, there is no way you would um, extricate uh, actions of men from the very society they live in. It, it's just like saying that uh, police is bad, while we all forget that police is part of our society. So the action of vote by itself, you know, uh, it goes to show the moral dependence. It goes to show us a people how we value issues, real issues around voting. You know, or even generally how we even treat um, work, how we treat uh, merit, you know, how we even get jobs, you know, how we get admissions in our universities or any other uh, uh, point of study, how we cheat ourselves. You know, so, yes, I agree that, yeah, and that uh, it's a reflection of society. But more importantly, uh, this is going about the fact that I'm um, like, okay, that's what, just like I was saying, that when you vote, you are either voting for your freedom or you are voting for your bondage. So people have, are yet to get this connect. It's just only recently because of the kind of work in society, the media, NOA, and other stakeholders like Heineck are doing. So people are beginning to begin to get the connect. Like I tell people every day, that you can see how powerful the president is. Many statements. You know, the words of the president is like law. Especially in third world country, where we hardly see people, uh, see political leaders obey our laws. You know, so they are very powerful instruments. Therefore, when you are voting, you should not have to your mind that you are voting someone with so much power. Therefore, you should go the extent of the value you place in that vote. So it is, it is, it is, it, it is, it is a fact that our people, above food and all, it is a fact that people don't really place so much value on that voter's card. And but we have always told them, as we as we were not considering you are giving five thousand naira, simply divide five thousand naira by four years. We have around uh, 365, 366 at most in a year. So divide it. 
So at the end of the day, you are going home with about two naira. Is that what you want to change your future? So you have to be careful who you vote for president. You have to be careful who you vote for governor. You have to be careful who is the local government chair. Who is the national assembly member? Who is the national assembly member? These are the things that you have to have at the back of your mind before you vote. So that when our people are beginning to know the value of that vote, while I agree that yes, uh, the corruption or the tendency of uh, 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 vote buying is as a result of the reflection of our society, but more importantly is the fact that our uh, people don't know the value. I'll let you say this for free. Nobody can read the election when the people are ready to vote. My colleague knows we have been very active election observers for the past, at least at the minimum from 2011, as the only as an active election observer. Talks during the elections when people don't come out, where is voter apathy? When people don't come out, it's far from where is voter apathy? During the apples, when some persons among the voters are choose to compromise, well, let me tell you, the, the politicians will tell you that your votes don't count. If it doesn't count, it doesn't count, it doesn't count, some corrupt high officials, some corrupt uh, police officers, and other uh, uh, election agents tell you one thing, your vote counts. But what you should do this time around is the fact that you should stick to your vote, vote for your vote, and make sure that your vote counts. But let me say this to you. Let me tell you. I am um, the transition country group. You know, very critical you know, components of our democracy and transition person. Can you divulge? Can, can you separate the Nigerian typical society that we are from the old party? Yeah. They, they have come from their own perspective. I want to hear from their own perspective. Thank you very much. Um, I will say this. Vote buying, from our experiences in the field, let me, let's try to be realistic. Other levels, not as spheres apart from the political setting. That's what I want you to divulge. Yes, they have been taking part. They have, those things have been happening. But it depends on the time and space. Morality has a lot to do. Morality has a lot. It's not enough to have people, professors, doctors, lawyers, engineers, without understanding that morality is what we need at this time to build a better society. Because the people that read this election, people that do this vote buying, people that sell their conscience, our professors are involved, our doctors are involved, our small black men, our anthropologists are involved. So you see, it has nothing to do with title. It has nothing to do with personality. It's the consciousness. When we start building morality, the values, value creation, voters' education, as what our INEC are doing, for instance, mobilizing, informing the, pop, the masses about the need for them to have their PBC and the importance of what PBC can do for them and how that PDC can better their society. It's an engagement. When we understand this, then we see it as a responsibility to come out and vote and not to sell our votes. Yes, they will come because our political class and they have destroyed the society with poverty. And when there is anger in the land, it's an easy tool of playing in the minds of masses. Yes, I don't want us to dwell so much on this, but then, you know, there is something I want you people to really, you know, de decipher here. Is it really possible to not buy and sell goods in a society where virtually everything is bought and sell? Corruption is so endemic. You know, that's what I want you people to decipher. Is it so easy for people not to sell the food? Is it in a situation where politicians have deliberately popularized and you know, make the people to be beggarly and to mouth. No. Now, now let, me, let me just say, let me just say this. It's easy when the populace, when the masses understand their responsibility, that the power is in our hands. The power is not in the hand of the as the, the cabal in Asura. The as a nation. The power is not in the hands. The power is in the hands of the masses. The common woman selling pepper in the markets. The youth and the streets, they have the power to decide who leads them. 
For instance, if there is a proper education and improvement of this process, we will know that a member of the House of Assembly of our constituency, a member of the House of Press, a member of our, uh, the, 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 the Green Chambers, are representing, they are representing us. We employ them by way of our responsibility as citizens to serve us. So if we go to their offices, they should listen to us, be goodness, mm. and to a large extent, it will reduce vote back. I don't even do the perspective. No, 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 sorry, let me, let me, let's not dwell so much. You know, time is of essence. We, we need to, in a touch, a little bit more. You know? <laughs> so, I, you see, Nigerian politicians have deliberately decided to popularize Nigeria just so that during the election, they can influence them with their stolen words. Yeah? With their stolen words. You are from the civil society organization. What should you take? Yeah, um, it's true that um, I know our poor. There is no um, gain say. For instance, in the state I will leave, you, you can't uh, really see any industry springing up. Uh, even more involved industries like uh, glass industry, uh, industry, all those things are all shut down. You know. So, uh, so yeah, I agree with you that even. Omera uh, is most diving, piece of getting bad security, food, price of price of goods and services are uh, skyrocketing. Yeah, all of these realities are uh, are splashing and having effect on our people. But in the midst of all of, the, of all of this, tell me the truth. If I come to your house, you want have a power flyer to take your child, will you agree? At least you put up a fight. You would just, just like a piece of vote by you. You would not just, ah, what is that? I'm not giving five thousand for my vote. I am talking about the willingness on the part of the buyer. Because there will always be, there will always be a giver. It's a fact. Until you have a government to punish such givers. Sorry to God, are you sure that? A man who is very, very hungry, his senses are very, very... Busy. This is where I want to come in. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Our per capita income is low. We want to talk of the economy. And uh, there is so much inflation globally now. So you cannot expect this vote buying just to die. Let me, uh, hunger is in the sorry, land. Sorry, I'll come back to you. Yes. You will take it, but our correspondents are on standby. Okay. You know, from the Gokana local government area, where... Ah, uh, sister, Uwe Kabari, by the poor is on standby. Please, uh, Uwe Kabari, please take it up. We are listening to you. Thank you, Mr. Abiyah Sanibo, for having me. I am Barikua Uwe Kabari, Komo Bokana Local Government Area. With me here is Mr. Francis Vickery. Our topic today is vote buying implications on our democracy. Mr. Francis Vickery, what do you have to say on this topic, vote buying implications on our democracy? Yes, um, thank you very much. Thank you for this great opportunity given to me. Okay, and uh, first and foremost, when we are talking about the vote by it will definitely corrupt our 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 government. You get it? So at this point we should go for the right person in our mind. The person that we know that he has what it takes to deliver and also to redeem his promise as well. So vote by will not give us the thing that we are expected to get or to have as well. All right? So now, it will not help us in any way. So this is the time and the point that our people need to vote for the right person, the person that will make this country so good and nice to us. You understand me? So it is terribly imperative to go for the right person. And as you go for the right person, definitely the country will change for good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Over to you, Mr. Abies and you. Thank you there, Thank you. Ua Baripua. We also we have our correspondents on standby from Ogubolu local government with 
Doris Omaku. Doris Omaku, you're on. Please take it off. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, yeah. good morning, Mr. Jason, about the presenter. I'm Doris Omaku, Como, Ubola, HGA. I'm here to discuss the topic which says vote buying in this our democracy. Standing here with me is Mr. Emmanuel Febrasuma, a staff of the council. So, Mr. Febrasuma, please, you are welcome to this our program. Please, what do you have to say about this vote buying in this our forthcoming election? Thank you. Well, generally, vote buying, as you stated, or let me just start from the electoral law. Vote buying is a criminal offense, and anybody that is involved in buying or selling need to be prosecuted by the law enforcement agency. Having said that, vote buying does not bring any good to society. It's, it's evil. Once bo a, a vote is bought and sold, it leads to the emergence of bad leadership, to under development of the society. In some cases, also lead to crisis in the area. If somebody gives you money and you vote for the person, the person has the responsibility or the legal right in quote to retrieve back his money from where, not from you, from the national resources, from what it will use for development of us. So it will end up not developing or bring any developmental project. We we'll just concentrate on getting back his money. Secondly, we'll look at the electorate. Let's look also at the electoral umpires and also the security uh, agencies. Once uh, an INEC officer gives result to somebody that did not score a given vote. That person has taken money, not do it out of charity. He did because he was paid. So he has sold the vote of the electorates in that uh, pulling booth. Then let's also talk about the security people. When they, they aid politicians to run away with electoral matter, that is also stealing of vote and they are involved in vote selling. They, 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 they've taken the right of the people. So I want to advise that in the forthcoming election, let all of us vote for the right candidate of our choice, not involved in buying of vote or selling of, of vote. So we will have the development that we are all talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Febrasuma, for coming to this program. Thank you, Mr. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is, thank you there, Dr. Sumaku. Yeah, there are some um, pertinent issues were raised there, you know, that our, the INEC man needs to clear the air. Yes, uh, I, I heard the background uh, uh, information that INEC people do get result or sell result or uh, a lot uh, votes to candidates. It is not possible. I have never seen such anywhere unless it is done elsewhere that is not uh, within the jurisdiction of where I work. Um, the new innovations in the electoral acts cannot even let uh, any electoral malpractice happen unless there is an abnormal circumstance. To start with, how will you do? There is no usage of incident form anymore because overvoting is being checked by those accredited to vote on the election day. S secondly, we are going to be remitting results by the legalized uh, electronic devices now we are using, INEC is using. Thirdly, we publish our results at the polling unit via, uh, uh, via a form called ECCCE. This is to showcase transparency. You cannot just uh, uh, take people's vote and throw it away or uh, sustain the wish of the masses because of greed. It is not possible. We have our ethics anyway, yeah. ethics of operation yes, and our professionalism anyway when we are working. Yes, we cannot... I'm afraid I have to let's retract the conversation. You have cleared the air on that and this thing. Um, at this point, uh, viewers will have to open the phone lines. Um, we told you we are giving you another very wonderful, beautiful platform for those who are not, you know, giving to writing, you know, you can just uh, call them to join the conversation. The numbers are plus 234-91-66-58-7355. I think that's once again, plus 234-91-66. 6-6-5-8-7-3-5-5. Let me take it very slowly this time again. Once the last time, plus two three four nine one six six five eight seven three five five. Please, when you call the first thing, reduce the devices of you know through which you're listening to us. Whichever device is just reduce the volume so that we can have a smooth conversation. And then when you call, please, your name, your location, and straight to your comment. Now, 
let me give you this instruction. We are doing this for sensitization. The conversation is for reorientation. The conversation is for enlightenment. So please keep it civil. Keep it civil as possible as you can. All substantiated claims will not be entertained. Please, please obey you. Um, we were talking about, you know, politicians are deliberately, deliberately, deliberately popularizing the masses. Now we are seeing the monies in dollars that are coming out. Those monies are there, but people are so poor. With the deliberate intent to control them. Yes, that's, that I was telling you that yeah. uh, these are indices of uh, underdevelopment. Uh, the per capita income is very low. There is inflation in the country. That is, it is coming to glare of, of the public that even the rural populace that there is a failed state. I swear, because in, in governance, if inflation comes to place and people could not afford three square meal, it means people are hungry. And you cannot expect a delegate to go there with an offer of monetary uh, 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 pacifier to get money from the gladiators. You tell them not to collect. They must collect the money because they are hungry. They will eat and they return to their family some change at home. And others will look up to that. And even the politicians themselves know as well that with that little patriotism they give, they lobby people to come and uh, sell their wish as per voting people, the right candidates. Uh, 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 Ambassador, let's, let's, let's see this. You know, eh? Can you please assess the impact of vote buying on the democracy of Nigeria? You know, using three key you know, critical deliverables. Talking about education, talking about uh, health, the, you know, healthcare, and then talking about the power sector. Thank you very much. It's so pathetic and uh, very, very unfortunate that these three uh, institutions are being brought forward for this cause because it's clear, it's clear that vote buying has caused a lot of damage. Because, for instance, let's do let's just do that, yeah, a, 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 B, C, and this one. If I spent 200. Sorry, sorry let us take this call. Yeah, hello. Your name, your, your name and then your location and then your comments. My name is Young Ayo Samono. You're welcome, sir. I'm no. calling from Port Sir. The topic of this course that I'm um, talking about good buying and its implications is um, an issue that is trending now, especially against the background of what we saw. Mm at the recent uh, primary, party primary. Mm. And um, we noticed that, in fact, some people have asked you that good buying has always been there, yeah. but with the last primary, it has taken a new dimension. Exactly, sir. So. And the temptation is there, looking at uh, what people got, delegates got from the primary, mm. which is actually a breach of the constitutional <coughs> right mm. of the uh, uh, citizens including that of the delegates. Because there can be no good buying without good service. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is at the point we are buying and coming to the that uh, the breach is actually done. Mm -hmm. Good buying is actually a breach of our electoral act. And uh, it is something that should be studied. In terms of implications, mm -hmm. the implications are quite far reaching. Yes, sir. Because one of the things that I've done, looking at the trade, uh, it has thrown off candidates that uh, have actually limited the choice of the people. And talking about the electorate, looking at the 2023 general election that is happening, if we have scenarios like that, then it means that uh, people have actually sold their function, people have actually compromised their development, and on the long run, the fact that uh, they don't have anything to even complain. Here, a man has sold the food for a paltry sum of maybe 5,000 naira, and you expect a legislator to go there after you reduce yourself to a commodity. Mm. Because that is what you have done by selling your food. Exactly. After you reduce yourself, you have sold 
your vote for 4,000 naira for four years of what the return on your investment. Your investment is the fact that you are voting the candidate. And when you vote for somebody like that for four years, he has brought you over for four years, whatever is the outcome is what you say. You don't need to complain. So I think it is something that you need to discuss. And I thank those that are really present here. And as many people have that are coming in already, and even the chief officer, I think it's something that all of us, people who are already there, mm. we must do our best with authority. I think that, that is my contribution for Thank you, thank you. Thank, th th thank you, sir, for your contribution. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your contribution. Yeah. Just before that call came in, we all agree that he has raised very critical and very salient and valuable points. Yeah. You know, we are talking about Egypt is here, trans, you know, transporting power to Europe. Recently, one of the political aspirants, named with her, has gone there to understudy some area of their district. Revolution in power. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know, we are here. Biden and selling vote. And then during the election, huge sum of money, humongous sum of money that you don't, you, you don't think of will begin to come out. The power sector has been there back and forth. You know, national grid collapsing from 300 and something megawatts to nine. The education is in shambles to the level under three. Health sector is nothing to write home about. And that's what we're there. You have spoken. Um, Comrade, I want you to learn what. Looking at these critical factors, what do you have to say? Um, I think my colleagues have. My colleagues in the studio have uh, uh, extensively uh, talked about uh, these issues. Uh, and uh, it cannot be over your side. Yes, uh, of course. The vote buying is, uh, is a cancer. It's a very dangerous uh, one at that. Uh, and uh, destroy every lever of our society, especially uh, the area of. Uh, Education power and national education. Uh, because a man can only wear those know-how. That's a natural implication. Mm -hmm. I, 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 was, I was in a bridge recently and I was asked to give a lecture around this. And I, I, I like the politician to your mechanic. For God's sake, if you want to fix your car, you don't look for a Yoruba mechanic. You don't look for a fluid mechanic. You don't look for a remote mechanic. You look for a mechanic that can fix your car. Period. If your mechanic comes to your house, he doesn't give you money. You give your mechanic money. Immediately, your mechanic gives you money. That means something is wrong. What I means is that if a mechanic gives you money, if your, if your mechanic comes to your house to repair your children's Sierra car, I'll tell you, ah, okay, okay uh, uh, this is your car. Uh, I'll feel repair, I'll feel repair, but don't worry. I'll give you 20,000 and go repair. You should be scared. You should be scared. Because the proper thing that would have been done is for the mechanic to explain to you why is the car not starting, how he's going to do it. It's your job to look at the mechanic properly, this mechanic. You should say you feel this thing. And based on the way he has explained what he has explained, and what is telling you this to change? You look at this critically and you do not bring that money from your pocket. The point I'm making is that we are supposed to be the ones to give politicians money to go and bring a campaign. Because he who pays the paper dictates yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Immediately, immediately, the politician gives you money. Where is he getting this money from? Getting this money from? Some of them, no. Some of them from their rich friends who are. Owners will provide for so this power sector you are talking about. We have had several that so very powerful forces who are import generators, who are managers of our uh, discos, but we have a uh, so called privatization sector who was just a chair. We have political leaders, they just share this thing among their, their friends and sold 
our little sector come to their friends. Uh, sorry with uh, my choice of uh, uh, we, we, that is our reality. And, and, and because of the characters you go there, that is why we are getting that result. So the reason why the sectors are bad is because we are building our car to the wrong mechanic. 2023, we should not care about the, the ethnic or religion of the mechanic. We should look for a mechanic that will be able to fix our car. Thank you. Uh, I see. It is, uh, I will there. No, wait, sorry. There, you see, something is worrisome. Recently, in the party province, who saw billion bands? Who saw Ghana Moto? That video, you know, was making their rounds. It, 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 it went viral in the data. It went viral. Okay, let's say it's social media. People say it's books and all of that. But the question I want to I have viewed around it is this, and I, I want you to, to, to give attention, pay attention to this question. Mm -hmm. Up to today, we are sitting here in this studio. EFCC, ICPC, the police. The no, monitoring these activities. Yes, and the and I know is, is also there. I yes, uh, it, it is not INEC's duty to that can uh, make people to sell their votes. If the scenario is being created wherever we are uh, monitoring primaries or party congresses, uh, we allot the people that have the statutory power to. Uh, uh, yes, of course, and uh, prosecute. So that is why we partnered with EFCC in this 2023 election, pre election, election proper, and after election, so that they can quiz those that are encouraging vote by. I know they are the politicians anyway, but it is not being done in the eyes of the commission, that is IMF. It is being done in the dark. So that is why we cannot actually catch people that are doing this. Okay, uh, if you say they are carrying bullion van and uh, it is within the party affairs, they do it within the party affairs. All we are waiting for is to have the candidate's name submitted to us via our portal, the new portal we've made now. So that, position of the INF. Yes. And if anybody is aggrieved out of the nomination, you should go to Federal High Court and Section section 82 sub 12 provided, or sub 8, Section 82 of the Electoral Act of 2022 has provided that the aftermath of that nomination, if a party is aggrieved, should go to Federal High Court. Or if such action is taken at the full glare of the contestant, they should go to Federal High Court to complain about the irregularities. Thank you, Mr. Sono. Let's just take comments from uh, our viewers. The, the, the comments are quite enormous here. God will help us to do justice to them. And Ellison Adapa, you are watching with us. Thank you very much. It's good to know that. Uh, Irene and Hegel, you're also watching. Brandy and Tony, you're watching with us. Brandy and Tony, vote buying, the implication on our democracy are too bad. Buying of votes can be referred to as buying someone's conscience. The, the, the person or persons buying the votes are not doing that to favor you, rather to, to, to sorry, you know, will be bad leader. Do not sell your votes, conscience, so that the future of your born will be guaranteed. Thank you very much for your thoughts. They are Brownie. Edwin Njoma, it's good to know that you're watching live with us. Is that of Epo? Uh, uh, the, the number again, yeah. We will call, we'll call the number once again out. We will call the number once again. Uh, no, it's good to know that you're watching live with us. If there wasn't poverty in the land, I don't think people I can understand. People are indeed really hungry. And it's difficult. Everybody has a stretch pool. You know, the elasticity are not the same for everybody. Thank you for your for your comment. The implication of vote buying is bad governance, which affects both the present and the future generation. You're not far from the truth, my sister. Thank you very much for your comment. There are some questions your view life with us. Thank you. The King of Williams, both buyers and sellers are all guilty. People should take responsibility and be responsible. People will take responsibility and be responsible. That's all for now. With poverty in this place, it is difficult to stop because every stakeholder of elections are involved. Thank you very much, Ekimo uh, Williams, for your trust here. Brilliant in them. You're practicing transparent democracy, requires a collective responsibility of both citizens and leaders. There should be no deficiency in each side for it to 
function. Yeah, thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What makes Emmanuel hardship, poverty, suffering, and selfishness are the major reason why vote buying is a pandemic ravaging the electoral system in Nigeria. My brother, you're not far from the truth. You're just near it on the edge. Thank you for your contribution. In of Ekorobia, your he said, uh, you're watching with us. Peter Ikabe, since the return of democracy to Nigeria in May 1999, vote buying has steadily grown in schedule and brazenness. It is true. It is taking a one shot dimension. It used to be way back, uh, I came for rice, a few kilos of rice and blood. Now, we are hearing dollar. So it is alarming. All the same thing. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for your comment. Adus, glad. Without seller, no buyer. Both seller and buyer are corrupt and should be discouraged because the expectation of the evidence of democracy will not be achieved. Yes, bad leadership. Bad leadership. And that bridge politician is selfish. Why? He wants to recoup. It's like an investment. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. Charles of Agudoros, your your streaming life does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Rosemary Abihan. Your streaming life with us. Thank you very much. Why can I command? For a country whose citizens have been shouting, we want change. Vote buying has been acting as a veil that is blocking their eyes from reality. Oh, you're very, very correct. Very, very correct. They, they keep the uh, list coming. We'll, we'll still come back and take your comments and yeah. comment again. Yeah, I was I still on your question, Sam. Why? You cut me short. I said, EFCC. You could see EFCC on that day of uh, party primaries. Have you heard that they have uh, prosecuted any one of the candidates? So I can I can go, I can go about to say that we have uh, institutional decadence. The proper institution that will check on this are not doing anything. Uh, or do you want to tell me that EFCC or ICPC do not know that money exchange runs during the uh, party primaries? Come uh -huh. on, just in one minute. Mm. These things are staring all in our eyes. The video went viral. We saw them. They were loading them down. Ghana was so field. And you mean the EFCCs, the ICPCs, the police, <laughs> or the NIA? Just mention them, all these agencies. But you see them? Nobody has, but today, has said a word about it. Nobody has been arrested. It is normal business as usual. You think, you think it's, everything is right? Um, I, I think there are a lot of issues around it. I, I think, and I'll put them in perspective rather than in three, three perspectives. Uh, the first perspective is that the fact that the, the third, uh, perspective uh, is the fact that the EFCC are equally creation of the Nigerian ruling class. So they dance to the two of the Nigerian ruling class. And the people who have been alleged to have committed this offense are members of the Nigerian ruling class. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I, therefore I, just, I just said what I said. Uh, therefore, you, you, know you, 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 expect, you expect that foot dragging. You know, that's what I expect. The other aspect is equal to the fact that the politicians too know that there is a lot of awareness because of, you know, today everybody is a journalist, social media, all that. So the entire which is going to be discreet, the entire as much as possible as the perpetrators, mm. to be especially at the level of uh, uh, diligence, because the numbers are few. Mm. So try to be discreet to cover it before uh, public uh, view. So they try all their best to make sure that the body passes in the way and it's difficult for you to actually go again. That's the second category. What category is the fact that why we blame EFCC for lacking good intelligence? We expected that EFCC would have, instead of coming to do a show in, uh, during the, convention. the convention, mm -hmm. we expected that they would have used their experts to get intelligent reports at the hotels where these people are, are lodged. Mm -hmm. As they are coming from their different states to the convention ground, they would have planted their people and both they know how they do it. When they, when they want to stop protests of civil society, they know how they do it. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder why they can't do it now. No, so, so, so I'm saying that. Because they have failed in that intelligence, mm -hmm. it will not be difficult for it to not ask them to go and prosecute those 
who they cannot have evidence. So we're coming back, we're coming, we're coming back. Uh, you, you have something to say before we round off this very conversation. But before we round, we are of this uh, particular, you know, topic we are on. I want us to join our correspondents from our West, you know, local government. We are in Ime Glory Righteous is on standby. In Ime Glory Righteous, take it off. We are, we are listening. Thank you, Mr. B. H. Shalibo. When you carry me come inside this anyway river state dialogue. My name na righteous glory in Nimi. I be staff for National Orientation Agency, River State. And um, the talk we want to touch light this morning na effect of vote buying on our democratic process. Now, we, we think we won't talk for this matter. Now, how this process, how the waiting, how this thing will affect, how it is they affect our people, our election today for this country, for us to get better leadership. So, I did here with Mr. Godson Okwara. We go tell us how and the how we will fit stop this thing and how this thing they affect us so that we will do what they right so that we will get good leadership. So, Mr. Gossin, Okora, tell us how these things will fit stop. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy for this question where they ask you a very serious question. Effect of vote buying on our democratic process. Now, something do like disease. Elect for our country, it affect our electoral system. Electoral system now they very expensive. Electorates don't know their right because people where candidates will carry money, buy their way through, and when they don't buy their way through, they will enter their do as they like because the money where they spend during the election, they will first want to get them back. Another thing we say is vote buying. We will be electorates, our voting power now don't they use less because. We they carry our vote right, they sell, exchange them with money. We know fit get sick during their during the election again. So, so, so. Yeah, thank you, new elections. Yeah, sorry we could not uh, because of want of time. We have to you know run so that we can touch other aspects of this conversation. Um, what do you think? Let me start with you, any politicians. To me, I I, I will call it just a mere blackmail. Because if you understand what leadership is and the responsibilities and values you have as a citizen, this is the main. Our employees, then we should know what we are doing. We can hire and fire. When we don't understand this value, we start leaving the main subjects to start discussing shadow. For instance, if I run a business to extravagantly spend, it's not reasonable on the transact. Power is the king. And the power is in the hands of the masses. Till the masses will rise, when they will rise to get back this power. That is the only way that we can sit on the table and start discussing factors that can improve our society. Comrade, you see, in this tech age, Nigeria and the world is a global village. And we're in the age, you know, age technology age. Another thing that happens in one country is actually, you know, consistent. I will just um, add, add what happens to people who call people stingy and all that. Mm. And beyond the fear, yeah, as a black man, I will just add again that this lack of education on the side of the people, you know, ignorance. Like I'm giving the mechanic example. Most of the mechanic says he wants to give you money, should be suspicious. That means he wants to steal something from that car that is very expensive. That is more than the money. That is more than the money is giving to you. <laughs> No mechanic will get the money. So it is ignorance. And so, uh, as a civil society, as anyway, that's why we're here anyway. Yeah. To educate our people, how to educate their ignorance. I'll ask you a question. No matter how poor you are, if you come on a weekend or you are in drives to your house to carry your son, will you agree? No matter your poverty, will you not agree? If they give you money in exchange for your son, will you agree? As soon as you have two children and they come and give you. Five billion for those two children. Will you agree to me? You will agree. Why would you? Are you not poor? So if you are poor, why do you, why you, you, you 
you are you are refusing because you know the importance of those children to all the to you. The value, 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 value of the children. The same way we have to educate our people to understand the value of okay. that voter's card and that PDC. Okay. Yeah. So once they know the value, they will never even even see, the some, some, something like Papa, a poor So why did she do that? Because there was awareness in that brand and she was in fact she never wanted a candidate that was giving her money for not just cause. So mm -hmm. it's about education, it's about awareness on the issue of uh, a, a public uh, perception and financial perception. Yeah. Uh, term, the image of Nigeria. Yeah, we, we are becoming a mockery of the world. Not that we are becoming, we are a mockery of the world. Mm -hmm. Even before the age of technology, or even when technology to trade down here, technology has been around, but before the age of trade down here, we have had a very bad image. Mm -hmm. Coupled with the fact that just within a, 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 a snap of the finger, information has gotten all over the world in, in this age, we have we have further destroyed. Uh, the already battered image of the country. And the earlier, we we'll begin to elect leaders. We are about 14 aspirants in this election. Look at them critically at the national level. Look at them. What are they going change their history? Forget them. If you see, I tell people that whatever you cannot solve in theory, you can never solve in practical. Before you set up this studio, you should be able to know. You, you must tell us where this mic will be, where the, the laptop will be, where the cameras will stand. You should be able to explain it in theory. So listen to the man, listen to his ideas, and what the boy is giving to you. If really anybody beats for the runaway, he's a thief. Now, yes, sir, if we have seen that it has been proven that delegates, you know, being a delegate is so lucrative. Of course. Now, what do you think this will do, you know, on uh, on the you know electoral system in future in future election? What do you think? How will it impact on our future election? Well, uh, um, INEC is airtight for any undue influence. INEC will perform its duty of conducting election without any malpractice, and it will be a credible and acceptable election. Yes, don't you think yes. that there will be a rush? Sorry, don't you think that there will be a rush for everybody to become what to become a delegate? Yes, yes of course. Not a it is not. It is a, it's a party affair. Party to be a delegate is a party affair. Yes. Not, even if see that is where. The, what we are doing is important. That's why this education is important. Yeah. It is true that when we conclude this, and again, this is the other way that others, like civil society and the uh, island, should not just stop this education uh, after the elections. After the elections, we should continue. So that when we sustain it, people will, but after people will say, no, don't give us money. The last time we gave money, and we carried the wrong candidate and we lost. We want the right person to, we want our party to win, we want the right person to represent us. Let's just quickly, at this point, let's just quickly take some comments from our uh, listeners who are winding, we are winding now, you know, for one time. Vote. Don't, you know, wrong here. Let the authorities in charge allow our vote count. Thank you. This is from Mumbaju. Vote by seem to have been on it institutionalized. It has been institutionalized, considering to do, including the National Assembly. Thank you, thank you, Judimba, for your listen. Uh, thank you. Uh, Linda Walso, your streaming life with us. Thank you. Yes, we, we. Uh, so, we, we are running off. I'm coming. We are, we are winding down. We are winding down. Yeah. Linda Walso, thank you for streaming live with us. Uju Mili, he's watching live with us. Thank you very much. Um, Linda Walso is also streaming live with us. Yes. Now, it has become, it is fast becoming a tradition. It's fast becoming a tradition that when a voter leaves the house, either for primary election or for general election, as he or she is leaving the house, it is expected that he or she will return, you know, in exchange for a vote, as he's coming back, he's not coming with some few pills of rice or, or some money. And if when such person comes back with empty handed, sometimes the relations of the people, people around, members of the family are disappointed. So it's, it has become a tradition. Now, the question is that 
What are we going to do differently to reverse this trend? Because we are looking for solution now. What are we going to do differently to reverse this trend? You know, the truth I say is it's very unfortunate that the system has been so cancerous and it has spread to that point. It's very, very unfortunate. Ideally, somebody that is going to carry out a civil responsibility, ideally, to be covered with money, is a civil responsibility you're going to do. It's your right as a citizen to vote. So you're not going, for, you're, you're not going to market to transact. So you see, it's the societal issue. Our values have dropped drastically. Morality also has dropped drastically. And the butchers are taking these tendencies as an advantage. Till the masses wake up, till our system started working, then and if an elderly woman and such who rejects money to vote for a candidate, a particular candidate that she does not admit, maybe by virtue of his proposals and manifesto, mm. she stood her ground. That means there is a lot for us to learn from that action. Okay. I think we can only. You are saying better. how will it stop? Awareness is the key. Education is the key. Voter education is the key. I believe that if political parties uh, start to have a, a voter education desk officer that will be telling the masses, the citizens, the would be voters, that vote buying is a menace, eating deep and destroying our future uh, democracy and even the, um, the future of our, our own children, uh, they will stop. And secondly, uh, if INEC could liaise with the National Assembly, it would stop. Secondly, thirdly, I mean, um, in our secondary schools, civic education teachers should put this in our curriculum so that they would be voters in future. We will start knowing that vote buying is against the civility of every human being. It is against the moral being of every woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. um, I, I want you please. citizens, it's your right to choose a candidate. Stick your ground. Pick a candidate that has vision, that has good plans, and know you're the one employing them. Employ them to do the job. And also put those points down to ask them what they told us they've not done. They have not done that. So it's to be a checklist. But not to match words and performance. Mm -hmm. They can only get better. Thank you. Yeah, to nurture our nascent democracy is not all about money. It's not all about money making. You can forfeit money, stay hungry to make your future brighter. Go get your PVC. Do not listen to the rumor that uh, revalidation of 2011 PVC is ongoing. There is nothing like revalidation. PVCs do not expire. I like as the proprietary right upon these PVCs that you people use. There is no body that is going to revalidate any PVC for future elections. INEC is uh, registering people till 30th of June. The online portal has closed for first registration. Those that are doing transfer, exchange uh, some um, transfers, defense cards, and some updates in their cards can do it online via cvr.inecnigeria.org. The portals are closed for online, and I advise political parties to rush. Today is 17th, and I think today is 17th. Uh, today, by 6 o'clock, submission of candidates' name, the national election, that is for presidency, national assembly, and House of Reps' names via our portal, online yes. portal, we close yes. by 6. Yes, this is where we wrap it up for today in the University Dialogue. I know you, you will agree with me that we have had a very robust and insightful, you know, conversation, you know, today. I want to use, um, you know, this opportunity to thank our amiable guest here, Mr. Mark Osulo. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You've been a wonderful person. This conversation, your, com your, your comments, your views, you know, had so much flesh, you know, to this conversation that we had today, this robust conversation that we had today. However, there are some, a few persons who may not take your, you know, thoughts and all of that. It's not because we don't want to take your thoughts, it's just because of uh, time. I also want to use this privilege and opportunity to thank our opportunity to enlighten and educate you. I also want to thank, you know, the producer, 
in person of Barrister Young Ayatom. I, this you know, appreciation will never be complete, complete if I forget to appreciate, you know, informer is Moye, who is ably assisting the director, making sure that everything is timely, everything happens, and then we'll have a very seamless conversation today. Viewers, it's on this note that we're going to round off today in a related dialogue. I want to leave you with this message. You've heard, I'm just, I'm just adding, they said your vote could not count. It is that statement is from the pit of hell. A vote that will not count. People are doing everything humanly possible to get it. Some people want to snatch it, some want to buy it. They even want to kill you just because of that vote. And yet you think that that thing is of no value. Who pursues something of no value? So go, register your PVC, get them, and participate in the forthcoming 2023 election responsibly. Until we come your way next week, same time, I remain your anchor and the ASNO. Goodbye. Cheers.